Y'all, it's about time we finally address the simacy in the room. The Sims 3 sucks. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? I've been playing this game for years, but I still don't know the answer to this question. Is The Sims 3 the best or the worst in the franchise? People are always debating about which Sims game is the best, and I'm here to settle it once and for all, and we're starting with the rock climbing goat herself. So let's just go ahead and get the first point out of the way. It's absolutely one of the most frustrating experiences getting this game to run well. And I started gaslighting myself because I had this thought and then told myself, nah, it's just because it's 2023, it's an old ass game. But if you watch old videos on YouTube or even remember for yourself, getting The Sims 3 to run without lags or crashes. The limit does not exist. I'm getting nervous just thinking about it. It's no secret that barely anyone can get the game to run smoothly. It's a lot and I'll leave some videos I recommend for helping with that down below. But when you do get The Sims 3 to run well, it feels so good, you feel accomplished. My game runs pretty good now and I ain't felt this accomplished since I modded Skyrim and watched a gang of Argonians get plowed by these two giant I said what I said! Moving on, The Sims 3 is so... If there's anything The Sims 4 community has taught me, it's that the aesthetic is what matters most. Who cares if The Sims and The Sims 4 are dead on the inside? They're hot. But luckily in The Sims 3, we got things. There's nothing a default skin replacement, some eye hairs, and gowns. Beautiful gowns, can't fix. But really, there's a mod out there to fix pudding face, there's lighting mods that make literally everything look better, and there's even mods to change the UI. She really glue up. Next, I just have to say it. The Sims 3 is honestly terrifying. What is that? Well, I'm talking about the traits here. Like some of these traits are so far out there that I've heard people say they can be offensive. I sort of get it. If you have a certain combination of traits, that Don't Sim will be scary as hell. The Sims in this game, bruh. I once had a Sim who had like 10 enemies without me even making that happen. So although the sims and the traits in this game can be wild as hell, it makes it really fun and I personally love how they went to the extremes with some of these traits. The next reason The Sims 3 is the best and worst in the franchise is just two words. Agnes Crumbletottom. Period. Dot. More specifically, her unfinished nursery, because that's a metaphor. Poor girl had dreams of starting a family, but her husband died tragically on their honeymoon, hence the unfinished nursery. It's sad, it's tragic, but it's deep. My point is, Agnes's tragic backstory sort of symbolizes the beauty of The Sims 3, because it's a flawed game. Much like Agnes's dreams for her future, The Sims 3 was ambitious. It took the best elements from previous games and improved upon them, but it was also very innovative and introduced brand new features to the franchise. But maybe it was too much. Maybe it was more than technology could handle at the time. And just like the tragedies that befell Agnes, The Sims 3 and all of its performance issues left many fans disappointed. Before we move on to the next point, I gotta address something I find sort of annoying. I hear these things all the time, and I quote, we can't have an open world in The Sims 4 because look at The Sims 3, it had one and it ran like shit. We can't have create a style tool because look at The Sims 3, it had that and it lagged. That's just absurd. It's too much and just to address one of those points, the open world. Do you know how many open world games exist right now? Games chock full of details, enormous maps, and no performance issues. There's a lot, pretty much every AAA game today is open world. So let's not use The Sims 3 as an excuse for why we can't can't have an open world in The Sims 4 or in future Sims games. So for this last point, I'm coming for the man. Not, not that man. The man. The machine. Adam Smith, Jeff Bezos, all of them. Death to all of them. Oh, because The Sims 3 was the game in the franchise that started a lot of the shenanigans that we see today with The Sims 4 and likely will continue to see in the future with The Sims 5. There were sim points, there's that annoying in-game shopping thing, there was the store. I'm Sims 3's that girl. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there may have been a store for The Sims 2 way back, but ain't nobody remember her. The Sims 3 gets all the blame and I'm ashamed that it was the first in the franchise to really experiment with those money-making aspects. So what's good about this? 
Honestly, I don't have a problem with things like the store, and that's because there's some good shit on there, which is an important point. Even though EA was up to their money grabbing, greedy shenanigans, they delivered with some amazing content for The Sims 3. The store items were really good too. I still use items I bought from The Sims 3 store to this day. The multi-tab, the playpen, this thing. I'm looking at y'all, y'all's is goats. Y'all deserve my coins. And I liked with the store that you could buy items items sort of a la carte, meaning I didn't have to buy an entire pack just to get that one item I really wanted. And y'all, that is a huge difference compared to that beast called The Sims 4. The beast? Yes. How dare you? So in the end, I have to say The Sims 3 is far from being the worst in the franchise. If you've seen my videos before, you ain't surprised to hear that. But if you haven't already, feel free to check out some of these videos on the screen. Thank you all for watching. Love you and see you next time.